Who doesn't love a good underdog story? From Rocky to Rudy and, well, I guess even underdog, we root for the comebacks of our favorite heroes. And why not in stocks? There's no shortage of great stocks, great companies you know can do better if just given the time. Even better, when the rest of the stock market is ridiculously expensive, you can find these unloved shares at a discount. In this video, I'll show you how to find the undervalued stocks ready to rebound, then reveal five stocks to watch right now. We're talking best value stocks today on Let's Talk Money. Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here, and you know we can't get started without that special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Nation, right now the stock market is full of winners. The market is up 17% so far this year, more than double its long-term average return for entire years, and even in stocks, success breeds success. Studies support the fact that stocks that outperform over the previous six months tend to do well in the following period as well. But in studies looking further out, over three to five years, it's a completely different story, an underdog story. In a study published by DeBont and Thaler, stocks with lower returns in the previous three to five years actually outperformed those with the better prior returns over the next five years. So it seems patience is a virtue when it comes to investing, and I wanna show you how to find the best of these undervalued stocks for that long-term strategy. We'll be focusing on only the best quality companies here, the cash flow machines that seem to defy the stock price. I'll take you through a screener first for these stocks, then later show you why I picked each of these filters and why they're important. Here we are on the stock screener on stockcard.io, and I'll start here by filtering for companies in high growth industries and only those traded on the NYSE or the NASDAQ. We don't want any riskier OTC or pink sheet stocks here. Then I also want companies with strong operations and a positive record for sales growth, but for some reason have just underperformed the market. Those undervalued stocks with the potential, but just getting no love from investors. I'm also gonna screen only for those companies with positive earnings trends and no cash concerns and for those with solid management able to get the most from those assets. So again, companies with great fundamentals, but just trading at a discount. Again, we'll go over each of these later, but if I click apply, that narrows our list to just 19 stocks to research for only the very best value stocks to buy. I'll leave a link to StockCard in the video description below to check out that screener. As a special bonus, I've negotiated an exclusive discount for all you out there in the nation. Use the promo code BOWTIENATION, all one word in lowercase, for an exclusive discount beyond the free trial. Our first unloved stock here, FNCB Bancorp, ticker FNCB, a small community bank with 17 offices in Pennsylvania. So this is an extremely small bank with just $1.4 billion in assets, but a track record over 111 years. It's got a lower leverage profile compared to its peers and revenue growth of nearly 10% annualized over the past five years. And those of you out there in the nation know, banks are one of my favorite industries right now. As lending comes back and those interest rates rise, banks like this are gonna be uniquely positioned for returns. Now, FNCB posted 30% year-over-year revenue growth last quarter and 12% over the last fiscal year, so really taking advantage of that recovery. Shares pay a 3.3% dividend yield and trade for just 0.95 times book value, which anytime you can get a quality bank at less than book value, that's a great investment right there. The stock has underperformed the Spider Regional Bank ETF, that's ticker KRE, by about 8% even though it's still producing a 14% return, so, so performing well, but lagging the industry. And we've still got four more value stocks to highlight, but I wanna detail each of those factors in the stock screener, show you why we picked them and why these are important in finding those undervalued, unloved companies. And here, I wanted to find companies that even if the company was underperforming, it was still gonna get that boost from the bigger picture. Then I also wanna filter for well-run companies, those with fundamentals that are creating value for the shareholders even if it's not reflected in the share price. So here we're screening for things like positive sales and earnings growth. We want companies that are making more money over the last three years. We're also looking for management that is producing a positive return on assets or an ROA, and especially ones that are above competitors in the same industry. Finally here within those fundamentals, we wanna look for companies with lots of cash on hand and lower debt. And that last one is more important than most investors realize. Now these are well-run companies that are creating value for shareholders through those higher profits, but if they don't have that financial flexibility that comes with having a stronger balance sheet, so higher amounts of cash and a low debt to equity ratio, they might not get the chance for a rebound. We want companies that are gonna survive before they thrive. And finally, we've already screened for those quality companies. Now we wanna filter for those that have underperformed. 
the stocks of solid investments that have gotten cheaper for some reason. Our next stock to watch here is Meridian Bioscience, ticker VIVO, an $888 million biotech. Meridian is a fully integrated life sciences and diagnostics company, which is rare for biotechs to have that kind of breadth of capabilities across not just development, but manufacturing and distribution. The company provides component manufacturing for antibodies and antigens, as well as diagnostics in gastrointestinal, respiratory, and blood testing. The COVID pandemic doubled revenue in the life sciences segment on that testing, and the company is guided to a 31% revenue growth this year, as high as $335 million. So the shares are very cheap here, at just 2.6 times sales for that kind of growth. Now, even better though, the company has also forecast operating profitability to increase to 30% this year from just 24% last year, so becoming more profitable as it grows those sales. Shares recently recovered from a 22% plunge in July to perform right along with the iShares Biotech ETF, that's ticker IBB for the year, but are still down 32% from that February peak. This is a cash positive company with $63 million in balance sheet cash against just 56 million in debt and that strong free cash flow of $48 million a year. So a very fundamentally strong company. The average analyst price target of $32 a share puts this stock 56% higher than the current price. Weyerhaeuser, ticker WY, is a favorite among REIT investors for its stability and 2% dividend yield. The company is one of the world's largest timberland owners with 11 million acres in the US and licenses on 14 million acres in Canada. And now even though lumber prices have come down from that boom we saw earlier in the year, the US alone is underbuilt by as much as 4 million homes, according to Freddie Mac, just still trying to make up for that deficit in construction after the housing bubble burst. So, so lumber demand should remain strong for years to come. Weyerhaeuser is a little bit more heavily leveraged with a billion dollars in cash against five and a half billion in debt, but it is a strong cash flow company with that portfolio of real assets. So you would expect it to have more leverage like any real estate company. Now, revenue grew by 45% in the most recent quarter and 15% for the last fiscal year. Shares are down 16% from the May peak along with the fall in lumber prices, but the stock is back in value territory and I like this one for a little diversification from those other stocks. The timberland ownership gives the shares some stability even if construction demand falls a little, so it's not quite as volatile as those other stocks you might see. The average analyst target of $41.35 per share puts this one just above its May high for a 22% return on top of that dividend. I'll highlight those last two value stocks, but another way to look for these unloved companies is just to look for the best companies in the worst sectors. Here if you go to sectorspider.com, one of my favorite resources really, and look at the sector tracker you can see which groups have underperformed over the last year. For example, here you see stocks in consumer staples and utilities have lagged the market over the last year with returns of less than a third the market average. So the idea here is just to look for those best stocks in those unloved sectors. So the companies that you know can do better if they haven't been held back by the performance in the sector as a whole. Quest Diagnostics, ticker DGX, is a $17 billion leader in biotech, serving one in three patients and half the hospitals in the United States with, with more than 1.8 million tests processed every single day. Now Quest has actually done done relatively well compared to some of the other diagnostics and testing companies over the past few months. A lot of these stocks have sold off after vaccines were approved because well, investors thought that that would be it for COVID, but the virus isn't going away anytime soon. The COVID is mutating and surviving. That's what viruses do, and we're going to need this testing for a very long time. Quest booked 40% revenue growth in the most recent quarter and 22% for the last fiscal year, so definitely checks that growth box, and the shares trade for just 1.6 times sales, so in that value territory as well. The average analyst target of $146 a share is only about 4% higher from here, but the shares pay a 1.75% dividend and have produced a 13.6% annual return over the last five years, so I expect this one to keep on growing. Next on our list of undervalued stocks, First Horizon, ticker FHN, is another regional bank, but quite a bit larger than most. The bank has over $87 billion in total assets, with $32 billion in assets under management within its wealth management segment. Now, First Horizon has 250 locations across 12 states in the southeast and 
a little more than a third here of the revenue is from that fee income. So fees from the fixed income and the wealth management segments rather than banking. Shares are down 18% from the May peak, pretty much in line with the performance on the Spider Regional Bank ETF, but the stock was up 50% in the first five months of the year. So definitely one that is leveraged to those interest rates and, and could jump again if rates increase. It is booking some strong growth here with 70% revenue growth in the last fiscal year, though some of that is with the merger with Iberia Bank, but it's also booked 33% annualized growth for the last three years. Shares pay a solid 3.9% dividend yield, and even though it's a little more expensive at 1%, 1.1 times book value, the stock generally trades at a premium, so it's still a value play against its own history. Now, the average analyst price target of $20 a share represents 20% upside from here on top of that dividend. Click on the video to the right for the five stocks with the potential to become the next Apple, five small cap companies with room to grow. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.